Yo, 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 what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Adam Moose, and today in this series called In Depth, I'm going to be breaking down everything that you need to know about Kha'Zix Jungle. Blood in the, the Void Bug Kha'Zix has been pretty much the most iconic one shot assassin in League's history. He's a ton of fun to play, and pretty damn scary to play against, making him a fantastic champion to learn and add into your arsenal. If you enjoy the content, it really helps me out if you could leave a like and comment on the video to help your boy out with the YouTube algorithm. If you want to talk with me and other members in the community looking to improve, be sure to join the Discord link that's in the description. I hope you guys can learn something. Enjoy the video. Abilities Cause passive is called Unseen Threat. Whenever an enemy loses sight of Kha'Zix, or when he activates his ult, becoming invisible, Kha's next basic attack gets empowered. This buffed up auto deals bonus magic damage and slows the enemy for 2 seconds. Keep in mind that this auto remains charged up until you use it, so you don't actually have to use it right away when you're unseen. Before we discuss all Kha's abilities, keep in mind that his ultimate's passive allows him to evolve one skill whenever you put a point into his R. We'll talk about each evolve and its benefits shortly. Kha'Zix's Q is called Taste Their Fear. Passively, Kha'Zix gains special interactions with enemies who are isolated. Enemies are considered isolated when they're not nearby allied champions or minions. Actively, Ka slashes the target enemy, dealing physical damage. If that target is isolated, the damage is increased by 110%. This is your main damage spell, and using it correctly makes a huge difference over the course of a game. First and most obvious is trying to get as many isolated cues off as you can. Fighting into crowded areas filled with enemies or minion waves is definitely not Kha'Zix's strong point. The key is to try and find carries out of position away from their team or picking people off alone out of vision. If you're inexperienced at Ka, it's very easy to cancel a bunch of autos if you start your Q and auto animation at the same time, since your Q has a small cast time. Getting used to this timing is very important for not only fighting enemy champions, but also clearing efficiently. If you choose the Evolved Reaper Claws, Ka gains 50 bonus range on his auto attacks and Q. If that target is isolated, your Q's cooldown is reduced by 45%, making you deal a ridiculous amount of DPS. Evolving Q first is all about pure damage and assassination power. An added benefit is that since you get cooldown reduction versus isolated targets, this helps DPS quite a bit versus single target camps and objectives, making you clear much faster. Kha'Zix's W is called Void Spike. Kha'Zix fires a cluster of spikes in the target direction that detonate when it hits an enemy, dealing physical damage in a small area. If Ka is within that detonation radius, he also heals himself. A cool trick is to use W before you jump in with E, healing as soon as you land onto your target. If you choose the evolved spike racks, Ka now shoots out three clusters out in a cone that slow and reveal all enemy champions hit for two seconds. If the enemy is isolated, Evolve Spike Rack Slow is increased to 90%, which is massive. Evolving your W gives you way more teamfighting power and utility in poke wars. Especially in fights over objectives, where both teams are trying to take control over the area, poking with W creates a ton of space for your team and also vision if enemies are hiding in bushes. Kha'Zix's E is called Leap. Ka leaps to the target location, dealing physical damage to nearby enemies upon landing. This is his gap closer, which really helps close in on low HP targets that you're looking to pick off. You can also cast Q while using Leap, allowing you to assassinate people midair. If you choose the Evolved Wings, Ka's Leap gains 200 range and will reset its cooldown whenever he scores a takedown against an enemy champion. This Evolve allows you to way more easily reposition and chase down low HP targets, resetting and then getting out again. Kha'Zix's ultimate is called Void Assault. As discussed earlier, each point in Kha'Zix's R will allow you to upgrade one of your skills. When you choose an Evolve, make sure that you're not mid-combat, since there's a 2 second cast time of actually evolving where you can't do anything. I've definitely trolled a couple times doing this mid-team fight, which is pretty hilarious. When casting Void Assault, Ka becomes invisible for 1.25 seconds and gains 40% bonus move speed. After 2 seconds of going invisible for the first time, Ka can cast this again at no additional cost. This ult is pretty simple, but can be used in many different ways depending on the situation. First off, this is a massive outplay tool, since you can juke out your enemies while invisible, pretending to go one way, and then juking the other. 
It can also be used to sneak out of a bush, getting right behind an unsuspecting enemy to one-shot them. Keep in mind that each use of your Void Assault reactivates your Unseen Threat passive, allowing you to get the extra damage and slow for every time that you go invisible. If you choose Evolve the Dative Cloaking, Ka's Invis duration increases while also giving him one extra ulti cast for a total of three. Each cast lasts two seconds, giving you a total of six seconds of invisibility, which is actually extremely long. Evolving your R gives you better ganking power and massive outplay potential due to such a long stealth duration. Although in past seasons players never really chose this, many high elo Kha'Zixes have actually been evolving this first since it can be used in many different ways throughout a game. Speaking of which, let's quickly go over the different evolution orders since this is one of the most important things to learn about Kha'Zix. First off is the OG Assassin Kha'Zix playstyle. Q evolve into E, and then either W or R to close it out. This is the setup with the most solo carry potential, since you're just looking for pure dueling power, DPS, and damage against objectives. Once you hit level 11, and you have your QE evolved, your goal is to go in, get a one shot, and then get out. The next setup, which is the current strongest among the top Kha'Zix players, is the RWE, Bruiser, and Playmaking style. This evolve order is extremely difficult to deal with since you get ton of stealth, huge slows, and utility from the W, and then E last for even more mobility. The movement speed from R, along with the slow from W, makes you pretty much impossible to escape from. It also works very well with the new bruiser builds that we'll discuss shortly. Keep in mind that neither of these are set in stone and can be interchangeable. If you're looking for a middle ground, Q evolve first into W, gives you both solid assassination potential with the utility from W. For ability maxing, Q first, W second, and E third is the standard skill order for pretty much all games. Runes. Now that we've gone over how to work Kha'Zix's kit, let's discuss his best rune setups for Season 11. First off, let's talk about the current most popular build in most elos for Kha'Zix, which is either Electrocute or Dark Harvest. Both these keystones are based around pure burst damage. Electrocute is the more early game focus rune, while Dark Harvest is a scaling option if you can stack it up. To close out the domination page, Sudden Impact, Eyeball Collection, and Ravenous Hunter are the go-to choices in most elos for max damage and some sustain. For secondary, Sorcery with Absolute Focus and Water Walking is a solid choice for extra dueling power and river control. If you're looking for a more utility-based setup, Inspiration with Magical Footwear and Cosmic Insight can be pretty strong as well. Keep in mind that these pages are best suited with Lethality builds looking to 100-0 enemies. Next up is the Conqueror page, which in my opinion is actually the strongest current build once you get the hang of it. This setup is more based around extended fights since the meta is currently so filled with bruisers and healing champions. It also goes very well with the RW evolves, giving you a ton of survivability and sustain. To close out the precision page, Triumph and either Legend Alacrity for more DPS, or Legend Tenacity versus teams with a lot of CC. Coup de Grasse is the best option into squishy teams for some extra execute damage, while Last Stand is better in games with more frontliners since you can sustain up more in extended fights. For secondary, Domination with Sudden Impact and Ingenious Hunter is an amazing combo that gains massive value with the Bruiser build. If you're looking for another option, the inspiration setup I mentioned earlier is very strong as well. For rune shards, double adaptive force is best for the lethality builds, while attack speed and adaptive force is the best for the bruiser build. Lastly, either armor or magic resist, depending on the team comps and jungle matchup. Items. Now that we've got runes down, let's talk about item builds. For starters, both red smite and blue smite are viable choices for Kha'Zix. Red Smite is the better dueling option, usually into melee matchups, while Blue Smite is nice for some extra utility into highly mobile or ranged team comps. It's also very important to pick up an early Oracle Lens, since it not only aids in assassinating targets, but it also ensures that your Unseen Threat passive is active while you're fighting in bushes. For Boots, Ka has three main options. Ionian Boots of Lucidity are the best all-around option to give you some extra utility and playmaking potential. If you need a defensive option, plated steel caps are great into auto attack based teams, while mercury treads provide some much needed tenacity versus tons of crowd control. Now for mythics, 
Since there are two main Kha'Zix builds that are very different, I'll discuss each separately. First is the Assassin build, where you're looking to choose between Duskblade, Prowler's Claw, and Eclipse. Duskblade is the most standard lethality option, since the extra invisibility gives you even more outplay potential and works very well with your passive. If you want pure burst, Prowler's Claw is a good choice to really get on top of mobile targets and one-shot them. If you want an in-between option for both Kha'Zix builds, Eclipse provides great burst, but with some added sustain and a shield to make you a little bit more durable. To close out the build, you're looking to build more lethality items while also getting some extra utility. This is a pure carry build, so to be useful, you need to find one-shots on enemies. Although this build has the highest carry potential, it's also pretty easy for you to be useless if it's not played correctly. Now for the Bruiser build, Gore Drinker is the go-to mythic choice. The aim of this build is to be more of a frontline carry, offering more utility, sustain, and teamfight disruption. Gore Drinker allows you to still one-shot isolated targets, while also being pretty damn resilient, which is very annoying to play against. To finish off this build, you're looking to build a balance of offense and defense. Always remember to choose your build according to what counters the enemy team, since there are so many different options. You can mix and match items from both the Assassin and Bruiser builds if necessary as well. Learning how to build Kha'Zix, depending on the game, is a skill that comes with time, but is extremely important for your success. Jungle Clears Now let's jump right into Kha'Zix's jungle pathing and some general jungle strategy. First off and most common is the 5 camp clear into scuttle or the full clear path. I mentioned both of these together since the only real difference is taking that 6th camp before scuttle. Although Ka is a strong duelist, he does lose 1v1 to a lot of junglers as well. The main reason for this is that his jump has an extremely long cooldown. Champs like Lee Sin or Nidalee can just bait out your jump and then reposition with their mobile kits. You can start your path on either side, depending on if you want a path towards the enemy jungler or not. If you're in a winning matchup, you can take a more aggressive approach, and if you're in a losing matchup, your goal is to get as much farm as you can, while also maybe sneaking in a scuttle. If you're not feeling pressured to get the scuttle right away, doing a full clear is best to maximize your early farming. If you're going to get contested at scuttle heavily, it can be beneficial to try and avoid your enemy by only farming 5 camps and then heading to the opposite scuttle. Next up is the 3 camp gank or invade path. This is a very situational path, either used to punish a weak early game jungler or to pick up a free gank kill. This is a high risk but high reward path since if you don't pick up a kill, your farming tempo will be extremely off. I don't want to discourage people for going for this path since it can definitely pay off if done correctly. The important thing to note is that Kha'Zix actually doesn't have the greatest early game playmaking, so in general you should be looking to play safe, maximize your farm, XP, and aim for that level 6 evolve power spike. Kha'Zix has surprisingly great scaling into the right team comps. With that being said, you can still definitely make things happen if you have an easy gank setup from your lanes, or if the enemy is completely overextended. This should always be an option, but forcing it is definitely not the move. Weaknesses Ka's biggest weakness is that he can struggle into comps with heavy crowd control and peel. This is even worse if you're going full assassin, since one mistake can leave you CC'd from 100 to 0. To avoid getting completely countered, it's important to play very cautiously and look for creative angles so you don't play directly into the enemy's win con. To build on top of this, Kha'Zix gets massively punished by making mistakes. Over committing too early with your leap is by far the most common mistake that I see. If you jump in and you're not able to kill the enemy, they will just turn around and insta kill you. This also goes for over committing to a target who's not isolated, which greatly reduces your strength. It's very important to think about what plays need to be made and then have some patience for the right moment. If you're the carry of your team, you can't afford to jump in, die, and giving over map control to the enemy. Lastly is that Kha'Zix actually has a very high skill ceiling. This is a benefit if you're willing to put the time into learning him, but definitely is not great for new players trying to first time him in ranked. Learning the different item builds, playstyles, and evolve combinations can be a bit overwhelming at first. Learning this comes with time, but is very rewarding for the people who want to put the time into it. Strengths now let's discuss what makes Kha'Zix a terror in the jungle. First off is the simple fact that Ka's isolated 1v1 damage is unmatched. His DPS is pretty insane if used correctly, which makes a good Kha'Zix player always have you on your toes. To emphasize this strength, it's crucial to use vision control to your advantage. Oracle Lens, 
plenty of control wards, and even Umbral Glaive can really make a big difference when sneaking through the jungle and in the river. If the enemy is forced to constantly face check blind into Kha'Zix, they'll eventually get deleted. This also lets you sneak objectives since your single target DPS is insanely high. If you catch the enemy jungler out of position, you can easily solo down a dragon or herald much faster than any other jungler. On the topic of damage, Ka is an amazing carry jungler. If you're looking for more of a solo carry playstyle, Kha'Zix is definitely the pick for you. He has a high risk, high reward playstyle. Either carry 1v9 or be completely useless. This is a great thing if you're confident in carrying, which gets very easy if you put some time into learning his kit. And lastly, Kha'Zix is actually just a ton of fun to play since he has so many playstyles, item builds, and evolve choices. He can be an assassin and a bruiser, which are both very different playstyles to switch it up a bit. From game to game, you can have a completely different champion identity, which makes him a great champ to one trick. His playstyle is very exciting and gets pretty damn scary when you have items and evolves. If you're looking for a flexible carry jungler, Kha'Zix is definitely the choice for you. That will do it for my in-depth guide on Kha'Zix Jungle. I appreciate you all for watching, and if you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to my channel for future in-depth videos. If you have any questions or opinions, be sure to leave them in the comments below. To show my appreciation for all of you who stayed till the end, I'll be giving away free coaching sessions every month to members of the Discord, so be sure to click the link in the description if you're interested. With all that being said, thanks again for watching. Until the next video, peace out.